All right, so we are at the second half of our Q&A. Let's see if I can get through all the questions we have right here. So the first we have is from the Radical Reject, and he asks, which do you prefer, the SNES or the Sega Genesis? Seriously, dude? Why do you gotta ask that? Um, now before I start, I wanna say this. Both consoles were great in their own right, and I do love both consoles equally. But if we're talking about one that I prefer, it would have to be the Sega Genesis. And the reason why I say that is because the Sega Genesis was a cool and edgy system back in the day. I mean, like, Sega really nailed it when it came to the marketing. I got both the systems shortly after the SNES launched. And I still love the SNES, but for the first couple of years, I loved the Sega Genesis more. I was always more interested into the more fast-paced arcade type of games, and the Genesis was better for that. However, one thing I prefer from the SNES over the Sega Genesis was the music sound, especially when you're playing Doom. But aside from that, I kinda prefer the Sega Genesis more just by a hair. And like I said, I love both systems. They both had great games and everlasting legacies, and that's all I have to say about that. And his second question, do you believe Kurt Cobain's death in April of 1994 not only marked the end of Nirvana, but also the end of the Seattle grunge era? Yeah, I believe that, because when you think about it, only Pearl Jam was successful. Um, Alice in Chains had a couple of more hits after that, but with Lane Staley's drug use and everything, they faded away. Um, I know they are considered grunge, but I don't consider them grunge. You then had a Chris Cornell breaking away from Soundgarden to form a new band called Audio Slave around 1997. Stone Temple Pilots was the same deal where Scott Whalen's drug use got out of control, and it definitely hurt the band. So after that, Pearl Jam was the only band that kept going because they shifted their sound a bit. But there you go. Alright, so the next question we have here is from Dark Hearts, and he asks, If you could hang with any celebrity for one week, who would it be? Eh, I mean, I can't really think of any celebrities that I would want to hang out with for one week. But if I had to choose, it probably would have to be Jean-Claude Van Damme, just because he was one of my childhood idols growing up. And maybe if he wanted to, he could teach me some martial arts. Um, maybe some celebrities before they died, like Kurt Cobain, or Brandon Lee for that matter. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it really. Um, like I said, I can't really think of any celebrities that I would hang out with for one week. But those are a few I could name. Okay, so the next question we have here is from Game Destroyer XYZ. And he asks, what's your opinion on the Casper movie from 1995? It's a pretty good movie, and I think I've mentioned this earlier, but the Casper movie from 1995 was one of the first movies I've seen in theaters. I haven't seen the movie in a long time though, but from what I remembered, it was a pretty highly entertaining movie. I just remembered Casper being a beautifully made movie, with great humor, excellent cast, and an enchanting music score, spectacular special effects, and a very touching story. This movie is a perfect family movie, and certainly not targeted only for children. Alright, his next question. Do you think glam metal is unfairly hated in the same way as new metal is? Um, no, I don't think so. Now, I will say that listening to it does give me a little bit of nostalgia because I used to listen to a lot of these bands with my uncle whenever he would drive me to places. And it does have a certain 80s charm to it. And there are some songs I kind of like from Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, and even from Pantera's glam metal days. And speaking of Pantera and glam metal, I was just listening to their power metal album which they released back in 1988. And that was when Phil Anselmo was introduced into Pantera, which I believe he came into the band around 1987. And I'm actually one of the few people that didn't mind power metal. But besides that, um, I was just never really into glam metal all that much. And it's certainly not something I'd listen to today. Like, I'm a very picky when it comes to listening to a lot of music from the 80s. 
Like, I do love listening to a lot of 80s dark wave, acid jazz, synth wave music, and a lot of thrash metal from bands like Metallica, which was back when they were at their absolute best. You know, bands like Slayer and Iron Maiden. But when it comes down to glam metal itself, it's just... How would I say it? Cheesy? Not to sound ignorant, but I've just always found it to be too poppy and glammy that put too much emphasis on getting money and girls, and looking kind of flamboyant than actually playing good music. So I personally don't think glam metal deserves a lot of hate, but it's not my cup of tea. And honestly, as much shit as I'm gonna get for this, but I kinda prefer new metal over it. And I know you didn't ask the question on which do I prefer, but I've just always felt new metal was better for me to listen to. The only thing it has over new metal are the guitar solos, which I'm a huge sucker for when it comes to rock and metal music. But new metal for me was just more badass. With the exception of rapping in a few new metal bands like Limb Biscuit and Crazy Town, new metal was not that bad. And a lot of people out there need to stop making it seem like it was a terrible period for metal. Listen to bands like Deftones, Korn, Mudvayne, Seven Dust, Slipknot, Edema, Disturbed, and Drowning Pool's Center album. So there you go. And his final question. I was a bit too young to start watching wrestling when it was good. What do you recommend for me as a first timer? I would probably start watching around 1995, but only for ECW because WWF and WCW sucked around that time. And in my opinion, this is when ECW started to get good. Because that's when you had the whole Raven and Tommy Dreamer feud really take off. ECW was one hell of a kick-ass product, so I would watch ECW until the very end. But as for the WWF and WCW, I would probably start watching around mid-1996. And it's funny too because that was around the time that I was getting into wrestling. Um, I wasn't like fully into it yet because around that time in 96 I was still pretty casual to the product. But I do remember what it was like watching wrestling from that time period. So I would say watch the product around mid-1996. Because for WCW, that was when the NWO angle started when Hogan joined the Outsiders. And I would specifically watch around Bash at the Beach in 1996. Now granted, WCW started to suck after the finger poke of doom. So I'd probably stop watching a little after that. Um, although I will say Spring Stampede in 1999 was probably their last good pay-per-view. So I'd probably stop watching from there unless you want to torture yourself through the Vince Russo era. But if you want to watch until the very end, then do what you want. But as for the WWF, I'd start watching the product around King of the Ring 1996. Cause that's when Stone Cold Steve Austin cut the infamous Austin 316 promo after he beat Jake the Snake Roberts in the finals, which was the beginning of the Austin era. And from then on, when we get to 1997, you'll start to see a huge change from the WWF as they started to go the more edgy route with their product. And you can definitely see the change from March of 1997 when they had a whole new intro and a whole new different arena with a Titan Tron. And this was 1997, so this was a pretty much a pre-attitude era time for WWF. So I'd watch the product from then on until 2002, which in my opinion was the last great year for the WWE. So there you go, I gave you options. And it really all depends on where you want to start watching, but there you go.